Hi, in this segment of Time for Change Kitchen, we're going to learn how to make a sourdough starter. We're going to make a wild yeast starter, uh, and we're also going to make my quick starter for those who want a quicker result. Sourdough starters have been around for hundreds of years. Some have even been passed down from generation to generation. Making a wild yeast starter is very simple, but it does take some time and a bit of babysitting. And once you have a healthy starter, it's easy to maintain it for years just by remembering to feed it once every one or two weeks uh, while it remains in your refrigerator. When you exceed the amount of uh, starter that you need, you can either throw away the excess or just remember it's time to bake bread. I learned to make sourdough starter from Eric, uh, who runs a blog called breadtopia.com. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, resource for making any type of sourdough bread. I, everything I know about making sourdough bread I learned from Eric. Eric learned this recipe from Peter Reinhardt, who is an author of many wonderful bread uh, cookbooks, and this is one that I love, The Bread Baker's Apprentice. Uh, and it seems that Peter learned to make this uh, pineapple juice method from uh, Deborah Wink, who is not only an accomplished baker, but she's also a chemist. Traditional wild yeast starter literally grabs the wild yeast from the air and uh, the air around you and from the bread that you're working with. And over a period of several days, it will begin the fermentation process that we're looking for. The, additional, the addition of pineapple juice at the beginning of the process uh, because it, create, it because it contains citric acid, it inhibits the growth of an unfriendly bacteria that tends to ruin about 40% of, flat, of sourdough starters. What I have added to this process is a seedling starter mat. Uh, I have granite countertops in my kitchen here in Virginia, and even in my um, house in Tennessee, which has wood countertops, uh, I find it difficult to keep my kitchen warm enough for dough to proof properly. And so one day I was working with some seedlings for my garden and I realized that this mat is just warm enough to, to allow it to proof dough perfectly. It keeps the temperature about 20 degrees above, amb above ambient temperature. It's inexpensive. I ordered this online for about $15 and, uh, and it works perfectly for proofing dough every time and it works well for st sourdough starters as well. So the first thing we're going to start with is a very clean bowl. Make sure you clean this very well and um, and what we're going to add to it, it is 33 grams which is about uh, three and a half tablespoons of flour. And for this video, I'm using just white bread flour. This is this is um, unbleached bread flour, and it's organic. And the reason I'm using bread flour for this is because I need need some um, I need this to make uh, injera, which is an Ethiopian flatbread, and it calls for for bread flour. If I want to, I could use. If I wanted to, I could use. Uh, any kind of whole grain. I could use uh, whole wheat, spelt flour, rye, whatever you choose. You can do it in exactly the same way. But for now we're using a white uh, bread flour. Uh, so this is 33 grams, three and a half tablespoons, and to that we're adding a quarter of a cup of, of pineapple juice. Uh, this pint, I use Dole You can use any brand you want. Just make sure it's 100% pineapple juice and that it's uh, unsweet, unsweetened. And this is not from a concentrate. And so we're going to mix this together. I'm using a small whisk for this and later we'll switch to something else, which I'll show you at the time. And we're just going to stir it and get the lumps out, at least as far as possible. And you want to stir it fairly vigorously because we want uh, to aerate it. 
that helps with the fermentation process. So this is relatively creamy. There's some tiny, tiny little uh, lumps of flour in it, but that's not significant. I'm whipping in a little air. Okay, so now what we will do is we will set this aside uh, for 24 hours. Uh, during that time, we will, 24 to 48 hours actually, and during that time, we're going to stir this at least twice a day, preferably three times. So we're going to put a lid on it. So this is our traditional sourdough uh, that we've started, and I'm going to show you a quick method. We're going to take another bowl, and we are going to put this exactly the same amount of flour, 33 grams, and exactly the same amount of pineapple juice, which is a quarter of a cup. I'm going to stir this a little bit because it has sediment in the bottom. And to that, I'm going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of active dry yeast. This is Fleischmann's. I like this, um, this type of yeast. Um, it's just my preference. I'm sure there are plenty out there that are, that are just as good. Um, this is very convenient for me to use. And so I'm going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of Fleischmann's active dry yeast, not the quick, dry, not the quick rise yeast. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to stir it up. Uh, the reason that we're making a quick method, obviously, is that some people don't want to wait several days to create a starter. This one will, will take maybe four days, maybe six days before uh, you have a good starter. Uh, and this one will start, it will start becoming active today. So we do the same thing. We're going to get stir it very well, get rid of the majority of the lumps. And uh, I'll come back in about two or three hours and check on this. Okay. And again, we cover it, and we'll be back to see how these are performing a little later in the day. Okay, so we're back visiting our starter again. This traditional starter, which is, which is um, a wild yeast starter, uh, is showing no activity at all. At all. It has been roughly an, two and a half hours, and I'm just going to give it a stir. We don't expect to see any activity in this for at least another day, and probably even two. But we're going to give it a, a good stir and try to get some um, aeration into to the uh, mixture. And then we'll cover it and come back and do it again before we go to bed tonight. Notice that I'm using the same um, whisk for both of them. I want to use the traditional starter, uh, mix it first, and then go to my um, uh, quick starter because I do not want this yeast contaminating this. Uh, moving this over here is not an issue. Okay, so we're going to cover this and let it sit for a while. And you can see that this uh, quick starter, after two and a half hours, is already uh, becoming quite active and because it has the uh, commercial yeast in it and if you can see I'm, I'm not sure you'll be able to but on the sides we can see quite a lot of bubbles happening so I'm going to give this one another stir you can see as I break it down as I stir it that it kind of crackles a little bit and we're going to um, give this one another stir and we're going to come back uh, as it, uh, in a few hours and we'll uh, probably feed this tonight before we go to bed. 
Okay, so we'll see you in a few hours. So it's been another two and a half hours of the first day of fermenting our starter. And if you look at the traditional starter batch, you can see that there are some bubbles on the top of it, which are a little bit deceptive. These are the bubbles that I whisked into it. This is the air that I whisked into the starter and that are coming to the top. This is really hasn't started the fermentation process yet. Uh, this is my quick starter and it's quite active. And if you look at the sides of it, you can see a multitude of little bubbles on the side. And uh, we're ready to feed this again. So uh, first of all, I'm going to stir this. This will get, uh, this is my third time. This, uh, this will get four stirrings today. You can't overdo it, but you can certainly underdo it. And we're going to um, whip in some air. That helps it on. Uh, begin the fermentation process better and faster. And we're not going to feed this until we, uh, for another day at least. I don't want to use my fingers to take it off because I don't want to contaminate this uh, starter. So we'll go ahead and stir this and if you listen carefully you may hear some crackling of the bubbles. Can you hear that? And so this is already forming a nice little starter. So we're going to go ahead and feed this one. So again, we're going to add 33 grams of um, three and a half tablespoons of white flour. And we're going to add a quarter cup, again, of, to, of um, pineapple juice. So again, we'll stir this until we um, work out most of these lumps. Okay, so there we have it. Now this is a two cup bowl. So we have already about a cup of starter. Um, it needs to sit in the refrigerator and develop for a while, but we're going to wait until tonight and feed it again. And, and this time we will just use um, flour and water. And so now we'll cover this and come back in two or three hours and check on it again. Okay, so it's been another two hours and we're back. Um, I've been checking on this because this has been a very active starter and I don't want it to overflow. Um, we'll look at our first starter, which is our traditional sourdough starter. And again, there are slight bubbles on the top, but I think that's more from uh, stirring it than from any real activity, although I could be wrong about that. Uh, but in any case, we're going to stir it again because you can't overdo it, stirring it. And we're going to whip in some um, air. There we go. Okay, so now we'll check our uh, quick starter and you can see how very active it is. This has only been two hours since the last time I fed it and you can see all of the bubbles on the side which shows how, how very well this is activating. I'm going to cover this one, we're going to set it aside and I'm going to stir this and deflate it. I'm using a Danish dough whisk to stir this. This is a wonderful tool 
And frankly, I don't know how I ever stirred batters before I got this this wonderful piece of equipment. It's very inexpensive and you can order it online and it makes it a pleasure working with doughs and batters. And uh, I highly recommend it. Okay, so we're going to deflate this and you see how very active this is now. So I'm going to uh, transfer this to a larger bowl because we have outgrown this one. This is a four cup bowl. And uh, we're going to feed it again, but this time we are not going to use pineapple juice, we're going to use water. And from now on, what we'll do is we'll use equal parts flour and water, but we'll use equal parts in weight, not in volume. So this is one half cup bread flour, which is 70, 75 grams in weight. And uh, to that, we are going to add 75 grams of water, which is roughly one third a cup. And it's important to use weight rather than volume because this will give us the consistency that we want to have. I'm going to feed this one more time before we're finished with this. And uh, then we're going to put it in the refrigerator where um, the, uh, um, high, the lower temperature will uh, allow this to become somewhat dormant and will keep it from rising very quickly. So you can really uh, stir this vigorously with this Danish dough whisk. I've never seen these uh, whisks uh, offered in any local uh, baking stores or uh, any kitchen store that I've been to, so, um, but I can easily find them online, and I'll, I'll offer you a link to them. They're not very expensive, and they're wonderful. I don't know how I ever lived without this tool. Okay, so that's good enough. And now we will cover this and we'll come back to it in uh, a couple of hours and see where we are. Okay, we're back. It's only been an hour. I've been keeping a close watch on this starter because it's very active and I do not want it to uh, bubble over. But you can see how active it is in just an hour after feeding it. This is our original starter, which is the wild yeast starter. And, I, and I'm going to go ahead and stir this. Uh, and I'll probably stir it one more time before I go to bed. But, um, or maybe not. We've certainly stirred it enough today. Okay, and, um, and now I'm going to deflate this. This is very active, lots of bubbles on the side, and of course you can see how bubbly it is on the top. Um, I'm going to deflate this and I'm going to feed it one more time with, um, with a half a cup of bread flour and one third cup um, of water. and uh, something I want to mention about the water that I forgot to mention before is it's important to use filtered water or, or spring water. If you have too much chlorine in your water, you could kill your yeast and defeat the whole purpose of making this. 
So um, uh, if you don't have much chlorine in your water, it's probably okay. I've, I've made successful starter with that, but it's best to use filtered water or spring water. I'm going to stir this up. Now this is a four cup bowl and we have probably two cups already in here. Once I get it deflated a bit, I can tell. Yeah, it's about half, a, half of this bowl. So we are now going to add a half a cup of, of white flour and a third of a cup of water. And this, this is by weight, 75 grams of white flour and 75 grams of water. Uh, we're going to do the one-to-one -one ratio by weight, not by volume. It's very handy to have a little kitchen scale to work with whenever you're making uh, any product with bread because it makes your measurements so much more accurate. And by bread, I mean dough, uh, any kind of flour. Uh, because uh, depending on how uh, have, how um, densely you pack your your measuring cup, you can end up with two different measurements. If from from if it's densely packed, it could be quite a bit lot heavier than if it's loosely packed. And those are things that are sometimes hard to judge. So you're always accurate if you if you weigh it. Okay, so we're just gonna work this really well. Try to get rid of some of these lumps. And this has been a very successful quick starter. Now, um, flavor wise, this uh, traditional starter is going to taste better. Uh, and and um, it, the only reason I use a quick starter is if I need to, if I know that I'm having guests coming over and I need a starter by you know, tomorrow or the next day, I'll do the quick starter. And But if I have the time to make the wild yeast starter, that's the way to go. Another thing about the quick starter is it's always successful. And sometimes, for reasons that may or may not be known to us, the uh, wild yeast starter may not work out. And so it's, it's uh, you're taking a little bit of a risk doing that. But if you give yourself time, then it's not a problem. Uh, the longer this um, yeast starter sits in your refrigerator, the more sour it will become. So um, um, I'm finished with this. I have enough starter. This is all that I'll need. And uh, I, it usually takes me a, a cup of starter to make um, uh, Ethiopian injera, which is why I'm making this starter, and it takes less than that, probably a quarter of a cup of starter to do a loaf of sourdough bread, so this is plenty for my purposes. So I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and let it sit for a day or maybe even two days to build up that sour flavor. And so this can go in the refrigerator now. And uh, to keep it alive, I just need to feed it once a week with equal parts uh, flour and equal parts water. And I usually never use more than a half a cup at a time of flour, which means half a cup of flour and a third of a cup of water. Uh, and, the, um, and the wild yeast starter will leave out, and it'll be out for another day or two. Uh, until it starts fermenting and then we'll feed it and we'll leave it out longer. So this doesn't go in the refrigerator for quite a while and this is completed and it will go in the refrigerator now. Okay, it's been 24 hours and uh, we're going to take a look at our uh, traditional sourdough starter and it is doing nothing. It's the the uh, pineapple juice has floated to the top and this is to be expected. It could take as long as four days to create a, a good active starter, so we're not going to despair just yet. What we are going to do is stir it and uh, 
stir it vigorously and whip in some uh, air. Um, and then we'll let it sit for another few hours and I'll come back and stir it again and we'll take a look at it again tonight. But uh, I don't anticipate uh, having a very active starter for another 24 hours. After uh, 48 hours, if it's not doing anything, we'll go ahead and feed it anyway. And, uh, but for now, we're just going to let it continue uh, working its magic and we'll get back to it and look at it again later. Uh, okay, and just for your information, I have pulled out the starter that, the quick starter, and I just want to show you how active it is in the refrigerator. Um, this is after it has had two feedings with flour and water. And if I had uh, left this sitting out on the counter, it would have overflowed. Uh, keeping it in the refrigerator keeps it at this level and, it, and it's safe to do, to do this. If I wanted to continue with this starter, I would transfer this to another, in, into another uh, container, a larger container. Uh, but I'm not going to continue with this starter. I'm going to use this and bake some bread. You can see how the bubbles are pulling apart. This is fantastic. Um, it hasn't really started taking on a sourdough character yet. It takes a few days to get that sour uh, uh, aroma and flavor. Um, and if you let this sit in the refrigerator for weeks and feed it every week, it will eventually develop the same character as this traditional starter. Uh, but this allows us to use it today if we want to, but it won't be very sour. It'll be slightly sour. Uh, tomorrow it'll be much nicer. And uh, I just wanted you to see how this looks after sitting in the refrigerator overnight. And we'll just put that back and leave it for up to a week or, or even two before we feed it again. And if we decide to feed it again, we do have to move it to a larger container. Okay, so we'll see when this starts bubbling. Okay, it's been 48 hours and we are checking our sourdough and it does not li look like it's doing anything at all. It is developing a wonderful sourdough smell though. It is not unusual for this to be inactive at this stage. Uh, however, after another 48 hours, if we don't see some activity, we have to throw it out and start again. So we're going to add uh, three and a half tablespoons, which is 33 grams of flour to this mixture. We're going to feed it anyway, even though it isn't yet active. And we're adding a quarter of a cup of, of pineapple juice, which is 60 grams or two ounces. And just like before, we're just going to stir it up and try to get some air in there. And we're going to let it sit again, uh, stirring it two or three times a day until um, it activates. Okay, that should do it. So we'll set this aside now and see uh, what happens after a few, after another 24 hours. Hi, we're back. It's day three of our uh, wild yeast sourdough starter, and I have some very exciting news. It's alive! <laughs> so, this is really very active. Uh, you see we've got a lot of bubbles here. Uh, you can see them from the side as well, and we couldn't ask for a better result. I was a little bit concerned about it last night because there was no activity at all, but today it is doing quite well. And uh, so what we are going to do now is we're going to transfer this to a larger bowl. And I've got my trusty uh, Danish dough whisk out. Now, um, this is a wonderful tool, as I've mentioned before, but you don't have to have that. You can use a spoon if you want to or a fork. Uh, this is just a very nice, convenient tool. Um, tool that I wanted you to know about. And so we're going to transfer this to a larger uh, bowl because it has outgrown this one. I've moved it to a four cup bowl. And to this we are going to add um, 
a half a cup of flour, which is 75 grams. And uh, we are also going to add a half a cup, uh, excuse me, it's about a third of a cup of water, which is 75 gram, grams in weight. Again, it's very important that from now on, we use uh, weight measurements rather than volume because that gives us the consistency that we want. This is really quite thin and we want it thicker than that. And so uh, it's also important to use uh, spring water or filtered water because if you have too much uh, chlorine in your water, it could very well kill your sourdough starter. So this will start uh, becoming very active now uh, just, just as the um, uh, yeast starter did that we did earlier and uh, and from now on we just uh, we feed it uh, equal parts flour to equal parts water in weight and uh, let it sit until it starts getting really bubbly and active and then you can feed it again as often as you want until you get the amount of starter that you need this is becoming nice and thicker now We'll come back in a few hours and look at this, and uh, but essentially we're done. So continue to feed this until you have as much starter as you want, and then refrigerate it. And then as long as you feed it every week or two, even two weeks, two weeks is fine, uh, you will have a healthy active starter from wild yeast that's, uh, that's been taken from the air and from the flour, and you'll be very happy with it. Uh, the longer you keep it in the refrigerator, the more sour it becomes. Um, every time you add flour to it, that reduces the sourness of it. So you should take out the portion that you need when you're ready to use it and then feed it. Not Don't feed it first. Uh, feed it after you've taken out what you need. But this is a beautiful starter and um, uh, we'll come back in a couple of hours and see where it is before we feed it one more time before I refrigerate it because this is really enough starter for me. Okay, it's been about six hours and I have come back to my starter and I'm delighted to find that it's very healthy and active. There's lots of bubbles going on. You can see where it has risen and then, and then deflated after it uh, had risen as much as it was going to. We've got plenty of bubbles on the side. You can see that this is just really taking off. And so we're going to feed it one more time. Uh, this is frankly all the starter I need, so I don't need to continually feed it and build it up. But if you want more starter, just continue doing it the way you're doing it and continue to feed and continue to, um, to come back every four, or four to six hours and feed it again. Uh, if I were you, I would put it in the refrigerator overnight as I was building it up so that it doesn't uh, uh, inadvertently die on you while waiting to be fed. Twelve hours is kind of a long time once, you've had an, once you have an active starter. So um, I'm going to feed it 75 grams or half a cup of um, bread flour. This is organic, unbleached bread flour. And, uh, and this is uh, 75 grams, or th about a third of a cup, of filtered water. After this rises, it is likely to rise beyond the limits of our bowl, so we're, so we're going to transfer it to another dish. I do want you to see what a nice sourdough texture this has, is, has developed. And if I were to feed it one more time, I think it would be absolutely perfect. And I'll probably do that. Well, of course I'll do that because we have to feed this to keep it alive. Um, I'm going to transfer it to this glass jar. This fits perfectly in my door, which is a nice unobtrusive place to keep sourdough starter. And uh, whatever jar you happen to use, you can use any kind of canning jar. Uh, any, really any kind of, of dish you want, any kind of jar you want. Um, but you don't want it to be full. You want it to be no more than maybe two-thirds full because otherwise as it, uh, as it outgasses, it's, it's possible that you're, it could explode. And then you could have sourdough all over your nice clean refrigerator. So what we'll do now is on... Uh, We'll put it in the refrigerator 
over the next few days it will become more and more sour and as long as you feed it once a week or even once every two weeks and that's plenty uh, your sourdough will be happy and will live for a very long time even years so now you know how to make a healthy wild yeast sourdough starter and you are ready to learn to make breads um, you can make a wonderful um, European crusty uh, sourdough loaves you can make flatbed breads such as Ethiopian injera uh, you can make uh, dinner rolls, uh, pancakes, there's just no end to what you can do with sourdough starter. So don't forget to feed it and your sourdough will be happy and so will you.